My owner's manual says I can carry only 150 pounds on top of this truck, and it has to be evenly spread out across the whole top. Well, I want to know, can I carry a rooftop tent and sleep in it? I'm kind of a big guy, and I, as you can see, this is a lot more than 150 pounds. Hi, I'm George, and today's five minute flash film is going to discuss all the stresses that occur on your rooftop rack when you have a tent and people, when the vehicle's in motion, when the vehicle is stationary. And we're actually gonna cover a small casualty and show you how the stresses play out on the roof rails as well. So stay tuned. The question oftentimes comes up online about how much weight can I put on my roof? Well, the manufacturer's answer is some value somewhere around 150 pounds. But the reality is, it depends. And that's what this video is all about, is defining what kind of loads and how much force they impose to try to give you a better answer than just something out of the owner's manual. In this video, I'm going to talk about static load, dynamic load, and oscillation stress. I am intentionally skipping compressive and tensile stresses to respect the short attention span theater patrons. Let's talk about static load. Static load is the force your load is putting on the roof rack under static, that is, stationary conditions. 150 pounds of load at rest exerts 150 pounds of force caused by gravitational attraction and does not change. Now what happens when we add people and dogs to the mix? The latter carries some of the weight, but only about 20%. As you can see here, the rest of the weight rests on the roof. The remainder rests on the ladder. Since the tent folds in half, think of the two halves independently, then add up their impacts on the roof. The tent is never deployed while moving. Let's fold it up and look at dynamic load. What happens to that 150 pounds when the truck is moving? As long as it's moving in a straight line, it's same as the static case. But if the truck has to turn a corner or swerve to avoid an obstacle, then there are rotational forces involved and those have greater factor on the load rating than the static load. The two major factors affecting dynamic load are the center of gravity of the vehicle and the rotational speed of the vehicle. The more you put on the roof, the higher the center of gravity and the more force is exerted on the vehicle trying to make it fall over. The other factor is the rotational speed of the vehicle. Think of driving 45 miles per hour on a vehicle on-ramp with a 250 foot radius like is shown here. No problem. However, you can't do 45 miles per hour through a traffic circle with a much shorter radius. The reason the traffic circle exerts more force is because you are completing the circle in much less time than on the interchange. Your vehicle speed is the same, but the rotational speed around the center of the circle is much higher. Okay, George, that's really cool, but can you quantify the impact of the dynamic forces? Why, yes I can. Some really smart people figured out the force is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by the radius. In simple terms, this means if I double the weight on the roof, I'm doubling the force with all other factors remaining constant. If I double my speed, however, the force is quadrupled. If I triple my speed, the force goes up by a factor of nine. With the radius in the bottom, a smaller radius increases the force. That means if I cut the radius in half, I double the force. So the traffic circle with a 100 foot radius compared to a freeway interchange with a 250 foot radius means the force went up 2.5 times. Now that 150 pounds 
is acting like 375 pounds pushing your truck over. In summary, we cannot ignore dynamic load and it plays a much larger role in answering the question, how much weight can I put on the roof? Oscillating stress is where a load that is completely within the manufacturer's rating leads to mount damage because of unusual terrain that causes the load to oscillate back and forth, stressing the mounts and the structures in the roof mounting system. In the end, the number in the owner's manual is a very conservative number that takes into account static and dynamic loads. So yes, you can go higher than the load rating in the owner's manual, but you have to take into account the dynamic load exerted on the vehicle. Thanks for watching. Please click like and subscribe for more 5-Minute Flash Films.